the virgin averse to matrimony by erasmus fourteen sixty six to fifteen thirty six from the colloquies of erasmus volume one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the virgin averse to matrimony the argument a virgin averse to matrimony will needs be a nun she is dissuaded from it and persuaded to moderate her inclination in this matter and to do nothing against her parents consent but rather to marry that virginity may be maintained in a conjugal life the monk's way of living in celibacy is rallied children why so called he abhors those plagiaries who entice young men and maidens into monasteries as though salvation was to be had no other way whence it comes to pass that many great wits are as it were buried alive eubulus catherine eubulus i am glad with all my heart that supper is over at last that we may have an opportunity to take a walk which is the great diversion of the world catherine and i was quite tired of sitting so long at table eubulus how green and charming does everything in the world look surely this is its youth catherine ay so it is eubulus but why is it not spring with you too catherine what do you mean eubulus because you look a little dull catherine why don't i look as i used to do eubulus shall i show you how you look catherine with all my heart eubulus do you see this rose how it contracts itself now towards night catherine yes i do see it and what then eubulus why just so you look catherine a very fine comparison eubulus if you won't believe me see your own face in this fountain here what was the meaning you sat sighing at supper so catherine pray don't ask questions about that which don't concern you eubulus but it does very much concern me since i can't be cheerful myself without you being so too see now there's another sigh and a deep one too catherine there is indeed something that troubles my mind but i must not tell it eubulus what won't you tell me that love you more dearly than i do my own sister my katie don't be afraid to speak be it what it will you are safe catherine if i should be safe enough yet i'm afraid i shall never the better in telling my tale to one that can do me no good eubulus how do you know that if i can't serve you in the thing itself perhaps i may in counsel or consolation catherine i can't speak it out eubulus what is the matter do you hate me catherine i love you more deeply than my own brother and yet for all that my heart won't let me divulge it eubulus will you tell me if i guess it why do you quibble now give me your word or i'll never let you alone till i have it out catherine well then i do give you my word eubulus upon the whole of the matter i can't imagine what you should want of being completely happy catherine i would i were so eubulus you are in the very flower of your age if i'm not mistaken you are now in your seventeenth year catherine that's true eubulus so that in my opinion the fear of old age can't yet be any part of your trouble catherine nothing less i assure you eubulus and you are every way lovely 
and that is the singular gift of god catherine of my person such as it is i neither glory nor complain eubulus and besides the habit of your body and your complexion bespeak you to be in perfect health unless you have some hidden distemper catherine nothing of that i thank god eubulus and besides your credit is fair catherine i trust it is eubulus and you are endowed with a good understanding suitable to the perfections of your body and such a one as i could wish to myself in order to my attainment of the liberal sciences catherine if i have i thank god for it eubulus and again you are of a good agreeable humour which is rarely met with in great beauties they are not wanting either catherine i wish they were such as they should be eubulus some people are uneasy at the meanness of their extraction but your parents are both of them well descended and virtuous of plentiful fortunes and very kind to you catherine i have nothing to complain upon that account eubulus what need of many words of all the young women in the country you are the person i would choose for a wife if i were in condition to pretend to it catherine and i would choose none but you for a husband if i were disposed to marry eubulus it must needs be some extraordinary matter that troubles your mind so catherine it is no light matter you may depend upon it eubulus you won't take it ill i hope if i guess at it catherine i have promised you i won't eubulus i know by experience what a torment love is come confess now is that it you promised to tell me catherine there's love in the case but not that sort of love that you imagine eubulus what sort of love is it that you mean catherine guess eubulus i have guessed all the guesses i can guess but i'm resolved i'll never let go of this hand till i have gotten it out of you catherine how violent you are eubulus whatever your care is repose it in my breast catherine since you are so urgent i will tell you from my very infancy i have had a very strong inclination eubulus to what i beseech you catherine to put myself into a cloister eubulus what to be a nun catherine yes eubulus ho oh, i find i was out in my notion to leave a shoulder of mutton for a sheep's head catherine what's that you say eubulus eubulus nothing my dear i did but cough but go on tell me it out catherine this was my inclination but my parents were violently set against it eubulus i hear ye catherine on the other hand i strove by entreaties fair words and tears to overcome that pious aversion of my parents eubulus o oh, strange catherine at length when they saw i persisted in entreaties prayers and tears they promised me that if i continued with the same mind till i was seventeen years of age they would let me to my own liberty the time is now come i continue still in the same mind and they go from their words this is that which troubles my mind i have told you my distemper do you be my physician and cure me if you can eubulus in the first place my sweet creature i would advise you to moderate your affections and if you can't do all you would do all that you can catherine it will certainly be the death of me if i hadn't my desire eubulus what was it that gave the first rise to this fatal resolution catherine 
formerly when i was a little girl they carried me into one of those cloisters of virgins carried me all about it and showed me the whole college i was mightily taken with the virgins they looked so charmingly pretty just like angels the chapels were so neat and smelt so sweet the gardens looked so delicately well ordered that in short which way soever i turned my eyes everything seemed delightful and then i had the prettiest discourse with the nuns and i found two or three that had been my playfellows when i was a child and i have had a strange passion for that sort of life ever since eubulus i have no dislike to the nunneries themselves though the same thing can never agree with all persons but considering your genius as far as i can gather from your complexion and manners i would rather advise you to an agreeable husband and set up a college in your own house of which he shall be the abbot and you the abbess catherine i will rather die than quit my resolution of virginity eubulus nay it is indeed an admirable thing to be a pure virgin but you may keep yourself so without running yourself into a cloister from which you never can come out you may keep your maidenhead at home with your parents catherine yes i may but it is not so safe there eubulus much safer truly in my judgment there than with those brawny swill-bellied monks they are no capons i assure you whatever you may think of them they are called fathers and they commonly make good their calling to the very letter time was when maids lived nowhere honester than at home with their parents when the only spiritual father they had was the bishop but prithee tell me what cloister hast thou made choice of among them all to be a slave in catherine the Christercian eubulus oh i know it it is a little way from your father's house catherine you are right eubulus i am very well acquainted with the whole gang a sweet fellowship to renounce father and mother friends and a worthy family for for the patriarch himself what with age wine and a certain natural drowsiness has been mulked this many a day he can't now relish anything but wine and he has two companions john and jadocus that match him to a hair and as for john indeed i can't say he is an ill man for he has nothing at all of a man about him but his beard not a grain of learning in him and not much more common prudence and jadocus he's so arrogant a sot that if he were not tied up to the habit of his order he would walk in the streets in a fool's cap with ears and bells at it catherine truly they seem to be very good men eubulus but my kitty i know em better than you do they will do good offices perhaps between you and your parents but they may gain a proselyte catherine jadocus is very civil to me eubulus a great favor indeed but suppose them good and learned men to-day you'll find em the contrary perhaps to-morrow and let them be what they will then you must bear with them catherine i am so troubled to see so many entertainments at my father's house and married folks are so given to talk smutty i am put to it sometimes when men come to kiss me and you know one can't deny a kiss eubulus he that would avoid everything that offends him must go out into the world we must accustom our ears to hear everything but let nothing enter the mind but what is good i suppose your parents allow you a chamber to yourself catherine yes they do eubulus then when you retire thither if you find the company go troublesome and while you are drinking and joking you may entertain yourself with christ your spouse praying singing and giving thanks your father's house will not defile you 
and you will make it the more pure catherine it is but a great deal safer to be in virgin company eubulus i do not disapprove of a chaste society yet i will not have you delude yourself with false imaginations when once you come to be thoroughly acquainted there and see things nearer hand perhaps things won't look with so good a face as they did once they are not all virgins that wear veils believe me catherine good words i beseech you eubulus those are good words that are true words i never read of but one virgin that was a mother i e the virgin mary unless the eulogy we appropriate to the virgin be transferred to a great many to be called virgins after childbearing catherine i abhor the thoughts on it eubulus nay and more than that those maids i'll assure you do more than becomes maids to do catherine i why so pray eubulus because there are more among em that imitate sappho in manners than are like her in wit catherine i don't very well understand you eubulus my dear kitty i therefore speak in cipher that you may not understand me catherine but my mind runs strangely to this course of life and i have a strong opinion that this disposition comes from god because it hath continued with me so many years and grows every day stronger and stronger eubulus your good parents being so violently set against it makes me suspect it if what you attempt were good god would have inclined your parents to favor the motion but you have contracted this affection from the gay things you saw when you were a child the tittle-tattles of the nuns and the hankering you have after your old companions the external pomp and specious ceremonies and the importunities of the senseless monks which hunt you to make a proselyte of you that they may tipple more largely they know your father to be liberal and bountiful and they'll either give him an invitation to them because they know he'll bring wine enough with him to serve their ten lusty soaks or else they'll come to him therefore let me advise you to do nothing without your parents consent whom god has appointed your guardians god would have inspired their minds too if the thing you were attempting were a religious matter catherine in this matter it is piety to condemn father and mother eubulus it is i grant sometimes a piece of piety to condemn father or mother for the sake of christ but for all that i would not act piously that being a christian and had a pagan to his father who had nothing but his son's charity to support him would forsake him and leave him to starve if you had not this day professed christ by baptism and if your parents should forbid you to be baptized you would indeed then do piously to prefer christ before your impious parents for if your parents should offer to force you to do some impious scandalous thing their authority in that case were to be condemned but what is this to the case of a nunnery you have christ at home you have the dictates of nature the approbation of heaven the exhortation of saint paul and the obligations of human laws for your obedience to parents and will you now withdraw yourself from under the authority of good and natural parents to give yourself up a slave to a fictitious father rather than to your real father and a strange mother instead of your true mother and to serve masters and mistresses rather than parents for you are so under your parents direction that they would have you be at liberty wholly and therefore sons and daughters are called liberi children because they are free from the condition of servants you are now of a free woman about to make yourself voluntarily a slave 
the clemency of the christian religion has in a great measure cast out of the world the old bondage saving only some obscure footsteps in some few places but there is now a day's found out under pretense of religion a new sort of servitude as they now live indeed in many monasteries you must do nothing there but by a rule and then all that you lose they get if you offer to step but one step out of the door you're lugged back again just like a criminal that had poisoned her father and to make the slavery yet more evident they changed the habit your parents gave you and after the manner of the slaves in old time bought and sold in the market they changed the very name that was given you in baptism and peter or john are called francis or dominic or thomas peter first gives his name up to christ and being to be entered into dominic's order he's called thomas if a military servant casts off the garment his master gave him is he not looked upon to have renounced his master and do we applaud him that takes upon him a habit that christ the master of us all never gave him he is punished more severely for the changing of it again than if he had a hundred times thrown away the livery of his lord and emperor which is the innocency of his mind catherine but they say it is a meritorious work to enter into this voluntary confinement eubulus that is a pharisaical doctrine st paul teaches us otherwise and will not have him that is called free make himself a servant but rather endeavor that he may be more free and this makes the servitude the worse that you may serve many masters and those most commonly fools too and debauches and besides that they are uncertain being every now and then new but answer me this one thing i beseech you do any laws discharge you from your duty to your parents catherine no eubulus can you buy or sell an estate against your parents consent catherine no i can't eubulus what right have you then to give away yourself to i know not whom against your parents consent are you not their child the dearest and the most appropriate part of their possession catherine in the business of religion the laws of nature give place eubulus the great point of our religion lies in our baptism but the matter in question here only the changing of a habit or of such a course of life which in itself is neither good nor evil and now consider but this one thing how many valuable privileges you lose together with your liberty now if you have a mind to read pray or sing you may go into your own chamber as much and as often as you please when you have enough of retirement you may go to church hear anthems prayers and sermons and if you see any matron or virgin remarkable for piety in whose company you may get good if you see any man that is endowed with singular probity from whom you may learn what will make for your bettering you may have their conversation and you may choose that preacher that preaches christ most purely when once you come into a cloister all these things that are the greatest assistances in the promotion of true piety you lose at once catherine but in the meantime i shall not be a nun eubulus what signifies the name consider the thing itself they make their boast of obedience and won't you be praiseworthy in being obedient to your parents your bishop and your pastor whom god has commanded you to obey do you profess poverty and may not you too when all is in your parents hands although the virgins of former times were in an especial manner commended by holy men for their liberality towards the poor but they could never have given anything if they had possessed nothing nor will your charity be ever the less for living with your parents 
and what is there more in a convent than these a veil a linen shift turned into a stole and certain ceremonies which of themselves signify nothing to the advancement of piety and make no body more acceptable in the eyes of christ who only regards the purity of the mind catherine this is news to me eubulus but it is true news when you not being discharged from the government of your parents can't dispose of or sell so much as a rag or an inch of ground what right can you pretend to for disposing of yourself into the service of a stranger catherine they say that the authority of a parent does not hinder a child from entering into a religious life eubulus did you not make profession of religion in your baptism catherine yes eubulus and are not they religious persons that conform to the precepts of christ catherine they are so eubulus what new religion is that then which makes that void that the law of nature had established what the old law hath taught and the gospel approved and the apostles confirmed that is an ordinance that never came from heaven but was hatched by a company of monks in their cells and after this manner some of them undertake to justify a marriage between a boy and a girl though without the privity and against the consent of their parents if the contract be as they phrase it in words of the present tense and yet that position is neither according to the dictate of nature the law of moses or the doctrine of christ or his apostles catherine do you think then that i may not espouse myself to christ without my parents consent eubulus i say that you have espoused him already and so we all have where is the woman that marries the same man twice the question is here only about places garments and ceremonies i don't think duty to parents is to be abandoned for the sake of these things and you ought to look to it that instead of espousing christ you don't espouse somebody else catherine but i am told that in this case it is a piece of the highest sanctity even to contemn one's parents eubulus pray require these doctors to show you a text for it out of the holy scriptures that teach this doctrine and if they can't do this then bid them drink off a good large bumper of burgundian wine that they can do bravely it is indeed a piece of piety to fly from wicked parents to christ but to fly from pious parents to a monkery that is as it too often proves to fly from aught to stark naught what pity is that i pray although in old time he that was converted from paganism to christianity paid yet as great a reverence to his idolatrous parents as it was possible to do without prejudice to religion itself catherine are you then against the main institution of a monkistic life eubulus no by no means but as i will not persuade anybody against it that is already engaged in this sort of life to endeavor to get out of it so i would most undoubtedly caution all young women especially those of generous tempers not to precipitate themselves unadvisedly into that state from which there is no getting out afterwards and rather because their chastity is more in danger in a cloister than out of it and beside that you may do whatsoever is done there as well as at home catherine you have indeed urged many and very considerable arguments yet this affection of mine can't be removed eubulus if i can't dissuade you from it as i wish heartily i could however remember this one thing that eubulus told you beforehand in the meantime out of the love i bear you i wish your inclinations may succeed better than my counsel End of 
the virgin averse to matrimony by erasmus fourteen sixty six to fifteen thirty six from the colloquies of erasmus volume one 